So it's now been about two months since Logan Paul came to his senses and realised that suing CoffeeZilla for exposing his own scam probably wasn't a good idea. And in this video coming to his senses, he even says that he's going to set up a refund system to refund some of the people who got scammed by him. I am personally committing a thousand ETH to this, which is about $1.3 million um, right now for players who want to get out. Which all sounds fine and dandy, if he actually did it. Because like I said, it's been two months since this video and no one has been refunded. And I'm not trying to sit here and say like, oh, he's definitely not trying to refund anyone ever. That's not the case, but you are messing with people's money, their livelihoods. Like, it's not really something you can take your time with. Now you might be wondering, how do I know that Logan Paul hasn't refunded anyone? And that's because CoffeeZilla's actually just went on the Joe Rogan podcast and spoke about it. But the reason why I find it extra funny that CoffeeZilla's just went on Joe Rogan is because Logan Paul has said on numerous occasions how he saved certain stories for Joe Rogan and his big goal in life is to go on the podcast. I heard that you have a wild story about that and you want to save it for Joe Rogan, which is fair, you know, yeah. I, I understand. That's I have like five good ass stories for Rogan. So now the bloke whose main goal in life is to go on the Joe Rogan podcast has to watch the person who exposed his scam in front of millions of people go on the Joe Rogan podcast. Like, you can write a better story. But since my last video talked about this situation, Logan Paul and a few of the people involved in the scam have actually been sued, which shouldn't really be much of a surprise. I think the bigger surprise was Logan Paul trying to sue somebody for his own scam. But before we get any further, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so because I'm trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. I've been trying to do it for a long time and I think we're like 17K off. So we're getting closer. So if you want to help out, please do. Biggest story we probably ever broken was either the FTX stuff but that was already kind of going on it's probably the Logan Paul story mm. the crypto zoo saga um that was a case where you know <laughs> sorry I can just imagine Logan Paul watching this and be like fuck please don't tell Rogan I'm a bad person this probably hurt Logan more than the original videos themselves like this must have hit deep I'm not they aware don't have of a voice I'm, I'm, I'm kind of aware that you covered it but I don't know the story so the let me let me back up there. So, okay. uh, no, don't back up, please. I want to go on the podcast. Honestly, if you listen hard enough, you can actually hear Logan Paul crying in a room somewhere watching this. Like, this is probably the worst case scenario for him. He, along with a lot of influencers, got really interested in like the crypto space, and he had done a coin before that called Dink Doink. Can we just have a moment to pay respects to Dink Doink? Gone but never forgotten. Eggs is NFT, and then there's a coin aspect to it called zoo tokens okay so you can buy these zoo tokens to buy the eggs and the idea is the eggs will then hatch into animals that will earn passive zoo tokens god when someone explains it out loud you really do realize how fucking stupid the idea was in the first place and someone tells me joe rogan isn't going to be sat there thinking oh yeah this sounds like a really fun idea you can buy eggs with zoo tokens and then the eggs will passively earn you zoo tokens does that make sense no well, <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. It doesn't make sense to any of us either. That was the idea pitched to people, and people immediately buy in. They $3 million in NFT sales, tens of millions of dollars in the tokens itself, the zoo tokens. Fucking hell. I mean, if them numbers are right, which, I mean, CoffeeZilla knows his shit, so I have no doubt that they are. The $1.3 million for the refunds doesn't really sound like that much anymore. 3 million for NFTs, 10 million plus for the tokens, like... The 1.3 million is very, very minimal. And let's not forget, by the way, that 1.3 million still hasn't been paid to anyone. But uh, yeah, I guess he's working on it just like he was the whole year leading up to CoffeeZilla's video. How does the hatching work? Is it on a computer model? It was like, on. What is it? It was on the blockchain. So you could like, you, your NFTs would turn into different. Honestly, Joe Rogan sounds so confused and you can't blame him. Like the whole idea of NFTs and crypto sounds fucking stupid in general. But Logan Paul scenario specifically, it's even worse. It's just blockchain coding. I mean, it's just, it's just. But how do they, is it, is it predetermined? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's how does your egg become it's, just, idea, it's just random. It's like, so it's what supposed to be randomly this? generated uh, animals. So you. And so you might get you a rhino. It, you you might, might get, yeah. Get and, a chicken. Exactly. And then you could like crossbreed your rhino with like a chicken and get uh, like a, uh, a Rickin or something and, <laughs> and get even more tokens. But uh, is this it? Yeah, th Jamie there it is. You get shark like bear shark. Bear shark. <laughs> so Oil like, panda. oh, listeners laugh. He thinks it's so fucking stupid. And remember, by the way, when Logan Paul launched this, he said he wants to create the new Pokemon. 
He thought this was going to live up to Pokemon. He thought he could create a picture of some type of panda with an elephant trunk and it could live up to Pikachu. The disrespect to Pikachu. As soon as my video comes out, he goes, damn, what a coincidence. Like, I've been working on it. Like, I was going to, you know, make it, like, launch it. In reality, he hadn't touched it for a very long period of time. But, so, so sorry, back up. There was no up. way okay. he was going to the, launch uh, it. I just don't believe the that token, for a second. Half the eggs don't work. And they're not actually earning anything. The whole time they said they were going to earn you these tokens, right? They're not earning anything. And the reason why, in my eyes, you can't use the excuse of, oh, he was just trying to work on it, or he might have made a mistake, it's just a failed project, is because he's done it so many times in the past. I mean... Dink Doink, for example, then he had this, and then he had Liquid Marketplace. Like, how many times can you do the same thing before we sit there and go, he's doing this on fucking purpose, isn't he? He had hired, basically, criminals who were selling on the back end, like, some of the tokens. No, 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 remember CoffeeZilla? Logan Paul said in his original response that it's your fault that he hired criminals. Somehow. Surely, as the internet detective that you proclaim to be, you would know that he spent time in prison for multiple felonies. Honestly, in hindsight, that was probably my favorite part in the whole drama when Logan Paul was like, oh, you've exposed all this, but you didn't expose the fact that he was also a criminal that I hired? How did you not work that out? It'll go down in history as the worst response ever, but also the best response for very different reasons. And then response, he's like, well, I'm going to sue you for that. He says he's going to sue you. Yeah, he said, I'll see you in court. And then the backlash. That went well, didn't it? <laughs> he said he was going to see him in court before he shit himself after seeing the reaction to his response. And he was like, fuck, I'm probably going to take a loss here, Anna. And I'm going to pay back $1.7 million. I'm committing $1.7 million to anyone who bought an NFT can get a refund. Now, there's a bit of an issue with that. So that's nice. I actually think it's great that that happened. But, okay, here we go. Uh, the there's refunds. two issues with it. Number one, which is that the NFTs were only half of a small part of the sale. They actually weren't even half. They because people bought these tokens. So the people who bought tokens get nothing. He's offering oh. you know this refund on the the NFTs. Okay, I didn't even clock that at first, but the refund, the one point three million dollars I think it was, even though I think you said one point seven there, was just for the people who bought the NFTs. But the people who bought the tokens are getting nothing, even though that was the majority of the buys. You see, when you say you're gonna refund people and you're putting $1.3 million towards the refunds, it sounds really good at first. And I mean, it's better than nothing, right? Of course. But then when you bear in mind how much people have spent and the fact that you're only refunding the people who bought the NFTs, it seems a bit sketchy, doesn't it? After he said he was gonna do it, he's posted nothing. There's no way to get a refund right now. So I keep asking him like, hey, where's, you promised 1.7 million to these investors. They're all waiting. Like, it's been over, uh, I think it's almost been two months now, and there's nothing. Bloody hell, yeah. I mean, he's not even responding. And that was part of the big problem before. He was just leaving people in the dust. So he clearly hasn't learned from his mistakes, because after saying he's going to refund people, when people have asked for the refunds and where they are, he hasn't given an update. Like, yeah, fair enough, it might take a bit of time. I personally don't know how long the process would take to refund $1.3 million to people you scammed using crypto. But if it is going to take a bit of time... Tell people that. What I'm ultimately looking for is some accountability from these guys. They're happy to make money from the endeavors. They're happy to potentially make millions of dollars from these, you know, different projects they're spinning up. But the second accountability is asked for, you can't reach them. I mean, that's very true, isn't it? Like, they were more than happy to launch this game that wasn't very good after they bigged it up massively to take people's money. But when it comes to actually refund the people you scammed, Radio silence. I think hopefully Logan Paul might say something now because like this is on Joe Rogan. I believe Joe Rogan gets like 10 million listens an episode or something ridiculous like that. So you'd think he should probably respond, but who fucking knows with that guy? I would assume that someone probably came to him with this project. This is just total assumption. Guesswork. Guessing on my part. So we have text messages for behind the scenes. He's pretty much a lot said of people. Idea, like. The people who were responsible for it say Logan kind of spearheaded the idea, and he says he spearheaded the idea. Yeah, I mean it's because he loves Pokemon so much. He came up with an idea that was, I want to say, similar to Pokemon, even though obviously that is at a big stretch. But yeah, it was his idea. I mean, this whole thing was his idea. He's been trying to get involved in crypto for so long now, and has made so many different projects around it. It was his thing. On my show, I'm trying to tell these like influencers, like when you take people's money, it's different. When you tell them you're going to make That's them very, money very and true. you get into the financial investment game, 
your responsibility is different. You can't just always pass the buck. That's why it blows my mind when you see these influencers just promoting a random NFT that they know nothing about. You're messing with people's money, people who probably don't have as much money as you in the first place, and you're just okay with that? I don't understand it. Now, it is obviously the minority of influencers, even though it doesn't seem that way, because I promise you, pretty much every single YouTuber, or Instagram person, or whatever else has been offered these crypto deals. Like, I've been offered them. So, so many people turn them down. But the ones who do accept them, are some of them absolutely huge influencers with millions and millions and millions of followers... I don't get it. It's so fucking selfish. Because it's not like you get a product in return, you know, when you do a brand deal for a product, they'll buy the product, they pretty much know what they're expecting, and they'll receive the product. But this is telling people to invest your money into something that's gonna earn you more money back, and then all of a sudden, you've lost all your fucking money. There's just sort of this feeling of, he's like, I just don't wanna think about this. Like, I don't wanna be, you know, he wants to focus on Prime which is successful. He doesn't really want to be bothered with the victims of the scheme that he ultimately thought of in the first place. Yeah, it really does seem that way. It seems like he does just want people to kind of forget about it because that's what he usually does with his like scandals, if you want to call them that, is he won't really address them or he might address them slightly just because he feels like he has to. And then he wants people to forget about it and move on and move on to the next like company or whatever else he's doing with his life. And maybe he's trying to do that again. I would like to think he is working on the refunds, but if he is, Tell people, especially tell the people who actually invested. You don't have to make a YouTube video about it, but you're not even telling the people on the Discord that you're working on it. You're just leaving them in the dark. It makes no sense. And you promised people you're gonna make the money. And now you haven't said anything for over a year, then you say you're gonna refund them and you don't say anything for two months. That's a big issue. It's a big, big issue. And fair play to CoffeeZilla because that is on a unedited format and he articulated the situation extremely, extremely well. And hopefully this might put a bit more pressure on Longer Paul to at least tell people what is happening with the refunds and maybe actually do them if he hasn't been fucking doing that for the past few months. Um, but yeah, we'll see what comes out of it. But yeah, either way, I would love to know your opinion on everything we spoke about in today's video. What do you think Logan has been doing? Do you think that he has just been trying to let the dust settle and hope people forget about it? Or do you think he is working on behind the scenes? Like, do you have faith in him? Let me know. And yeah, if you did enjoy, leave a like down below, subscribe if you are new, and until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, goodbye.